So what's your reaction to this uh, agreement that's been reached? It looks like it could ha be uh, up to a vote in the House by Wednesday. What's that going to mean for the dollar? Look, I think we've already for the last two weeks uh, been seeing a rally in the dollar. Um, you know, I guess optimism around this debt ceiling negotiation has driven the dollar higher. I think when we look at previous instances, particularly 2011, 2013, uh, you know, we saw the dollar rise around 8% in 2011 um, in the following month uh, of a debt ceiling reset and 4% in 2013. Um, you know, we can, it, while it's difficult to draw parallels like for like, you know, this time is different. We have interest rates going higher by the Fed. We have QT happening at the same time. But, you know, we think that there will be overall a uh, tighter liquidity environment uh, from restocking or replenishing the TGA uh, on the back of a, a reset or, or of some sort. And that would kind of push the dollar a little bit higher. We could argue part of it is already reflected in the price, but a little bit more upside from here. We do, of course, have another macro event for the US dollar on the horizon, and that is, of course, the next Fed meeting in a couple of weeks' time. There seems to be a lot of rhetoric around the chances of a pause or a skip, but both of those things suggest the Fed might be willing to hit play again sometime in the future. So with that in mind, uh, where are we heading for the greenback? So I think a few things. Now, I think one thing is we think that um, the Federal Reserve will possibly raise uh, 25 basis points in June. Uh, we've had the PCE data, which came out on Friday, personal spending as well, talking to us around the fact that the consum consumption in the U.S. still remains strong, which kind of drives the way for a little bit more upside in Fed uh, rates. Having said that, now that if we do get this new uh, debt ceiling a little bit out of the way, again, the Fed's focus on raising rates will be a little bit more easier for them. Um, there won't be this volatility uh, in between. Now, for the dollar, having said that, while I spoke about the fact that in the short term we see a little bit of dollar upside some may be already factored in on a longer term basis the fundamental view around the u.s doesn't change we think the u.s dollar in the longer term will weaken for three key reasons one being the fact that uh, it has been highly overvalued in fact based on our fair value models it replaced the u.s dollars almost over one standard deviation above fair value secondly we also think that obviously the u.s um, started raising rates well ahead of the boe and the ecb uh, so they will probably be the first to pause. We expect the BOE and ECB to raise at least two more times uh, going forward. And, you know, inflation broadly, you know, when we look at the U.S., it is moderating. Um, when you look at other countries, while it is sort of softening there, but it looks like the U.K. and Europe have a little bit more distance to cover in terms of moderating inflation mm -hmm. as opposed to the U.S. Yeah, we've had dollars. Obviously, a lot of policy divergence between the Fed and the BOJ as well. And we've got a yen right now, 140.81. As the US dollar eases, as you expect, where do you see the yen steadying? Look, we think over the towards the end of the year, we surely see yen strengthening. Uh, clearly, in the short term moves that we have seen, you know, the, the biggest volatility we have seen is in the rates market at the front end side of things, which has obviously uh, widened the rate differentials between U.S. and Japan, reflecting to uh, you know this 140 level that we're seeing right now. Uh, again, once you know the 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 market stabilizes, we have the debt ceiling behind us. Uh, we do think that this differential may narrow. We also expect the wide ICC uh, in Japan to be um, adjusted sometime towards the end of the year. Uh, and that should again uh, push and sort of drive us towards a slightly stronger yen than we see today. Not forgetting, you know, um, last year we had over 150 on the dollar yen. At that time, do, um, the Japan was facing a huge negative terms of trade shock. Much of that has now been, you know, uh, reduced. And so, you know, effectively, it doesn't look like this 140 should be here for a long period of time.